Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna do a Bookopoly check-in today. Uh, this is gonna be really quick. I only read five books in the month of February. They did span across several categories and genres, so um, I got to put down a lot of new stamps on my Bookopoly board. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna scoot all the way over here so that I can actually get the board up here the whole time. Uh, so I read five books, like I said, in the month of February. I, I DNF'd one book, though I DNF'd that actually at the beginning of February, but I'm going to talk about it here just briefly. Uh, that was The Tea Planner's Bride, which is the second one in this series. Didn't really care for it. It started off with just some really crappy characters that I'm just not interested in getting to know. It is very, like, jump right into a marriage situation, so uh i'm done on this we're we're good this can go back to the used bookstore uh, so obviously that didn't count for anything and if you do want to know more about any of these books then definitely check out my wrap up i'll link that down below i'm not really going to talk a whole lot about the books in this video just because this is purpose of this is to talk about the bookopoly board uh, so i did read autonomous uh, this is a sci-fi book technically more dystopian than anything I don't know. It has sci-fi elements. And then I read one historical fiction. That was the first one in that series, so The Tea Planner's Daughter, and I did like this one. If you like The Tea Rose, then you would like this one. I talk a little bit more about what that is in my wrap-up. That one picked up another historical fiction property. I am moving through those, so I have a house on those for the first time. So my first house in historical fiction, which is not surprising at all. And then I did pick up a short story collection. This actually was my Mothbox pick for the month, so I pulled Mothbox as my community bookshelf, as you can see, and this is what I read for that. Um, so this came in the short story collection moth box. I have one other short story collection to read for that, but yes, this one. And then for, oh, and I did forget to say that the, that autonomous, I actually counted this. This was for the Muse monthly, um, card for community bookshelf. So it didn't actually count towards sci-fi property. If I remember correctly, I'm a little, I don't know what I've done here, honestly. I think I made notes on my book spreadsheet, so I may have to go back and look at that to be 100% sure. But what I was doing is if I counted it for a community shelf or a chance card, it didn't count as a property. And if I, though, I like your thoughts on that because in the game of Monopoly, you can buy a property, no you can't. I was going to say you can buy a property and do a chance card in the same turn, but that's that's completely false because you have to land on the chance square to do that. You have to land on a property square to buy a property. Yeah. Anyways, this only counted for the card and not for a sci-fi property. Same thing with the short story collection. This is, it's not as complicated as it sounds. I know it's like, why are you doing this really complicated thing? It's actually working really well for me. That's one reason. And also it's not as complicated when I have this board brought up in front of me in Photoshop. It's just that you guys can see the board. I just see a big blank space over here. So that. Um, then I read or listened to Little Fires Everywhere. This one counted as general fiction. It is also from a Muse Monthly box, but I didn't draw another Muse Monthly card. I just wanted to read this and my hold came in at the library. So general fiction it is. And then the last one, this one caused me some, some debate. So this is Jane Eyre. Obviously it's a classic. It is also over 500 pages. I ended up counting it for a classics square, which is only $2. Yeah, I think it's just $2. The tax square, which is for over 500 pages, is $5. And I went back and forth on whether it should count for both, but then I ended again on the, you can't land on both squares at the same time, so you wouldn't be able to, in a game of Monopoly, count both. Um, so I ended up going with two on this and counting as a classic. The reason I did that instead of giving myself five is because I have faith in myself that I'm gonna read more 500 page books this year. I don't think I'm gonna read that many classics. 
So in the long run, it will probably garner me more, if that makes sense. I don't know. I just wanted to count it as a classic. That's really the main thing. So how did I do in the month of February? So I did end up completing my January... So how did I do in the month of February? So I did end up completing the Community Bookshelf Challenge that rolled over from January. I also completed the February Community Bookshelf Challenge. And I ended up rolling over my challenge for chance for February because I did start A Closed in Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. And since it's part of a companion series, I'm counting that and rolling it over and I should finish that in early March. And then I ended up putting a total of $9.75 in my pineapple bank. And I am very excited about that. I put actually more money in than last month when I read fewer books, but it was because I was reaching for things that weren't necessarily um, the, the smaller value ones on the board. So I did reach for a classic, which I normally probably wouldn't have done, especially in a short month like February, but I wanted to be able to check a classic square off this year. So I ended up picking Jane Eyre because of Bookopoly. So it is definitely affecting my reading choices and motivating me and I'm really excited that I'm doing it. Um, so as always, thank you Elena for making this challenge a, re a reality because then I could make it my own and it's definitely helping me in doing everything I want to do this year. Lowering that TBR, spending less money on books, bringing less books into our house because at this point while I still have some down here that are piled on the floor as far as unread books, those are a lot smaller because they're going on the shelves as I finish other books. But now I'm to the point where the red books have nowhere to go. So they are piled on the floor over there and I hate that. So definitely trying real hard to bring in less books into the house. We do not have the space for it. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this little Bookopoly check-in. And if you are participating in Bookopoly, I would love to see your videos or hear your stories down below. Let me know. Uh, as well as if you're doing anything else this year to motivate you to read or to tick off other challenges on your to-do list for reading, I would love to hear those as well. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.